Hi everyone, thanks for dropping by and for returning to the old world. It's been a little while since we've talked about my long-term dwarf project in any real detail, so I thought this would be a, a good opportunity to revisit this and also to look at part of my Christmas haul. So today we're going to do an unboxing of the Dwarf Infantry Pack by North Star Games, in a, done in association with Osprey Games and their Oathmark game. As with the infantry sets across this range, there's 30 multi-part car plastic figures, as you can see in the top left hand corner. And my view of these figures really is that they're representing the, the medium infantry, if you like, that would make up a dwarf army. There's three sets available. You've got dwarf infantry, heavy infantry, and light infantry. I see these guys really as perhaps the, the clansmen, call to arms, the friared type effort, if you like, of the, the dwarf army. Again, as with other boxes in this range, you get six identical sprues in the pack and some bases. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. First thing to look at is the bases they come with. These are the standard Renedra green square bases that you see in a lot of kits by a lot of manufacturers. These are 25 mil square bases. They are quite thin as well so you don't get a lot of height. I won't be using these personally for my dwarves because I'm looking to base them for Warhammer Fantasy which although there's arguments around whether base sizes might change because of scale creep putting that aside slightly um, I'm going to be targeting a, the classic 20 mil base size so as with my previous stuff I'm using green stuff world 20 mil square bases so that brings us to the sprue itself so as I say six identical sprues each one has enough parts on it to make five figures looking at the bodies here you can see that they are armored in chainmail vests so the heavy guys have got sort of plates I think the light guys have just got normal clothes so here we have chainmail as the the in between now they do have a few mold lines on them and i do find that mold lines on chain is a little bit tricky because it's easy to damage the underlying detail so you need to be a little bit careful with that but overall i think well proportioned models they're in a bit of there's enough variety there in the bodies and there's also minimal amounts of putting together as the legs and torso come as a single piece. If we have a look over here at the heads, there is a range of heads equipped with different helmets or hoods. Now, looking at the bodies and seeing that they're all equipped with chain, it does seem a little bit strange that some of the heads would only have hoods. I say that because obviously protecting the head is really important in a fight and if you can afford a chain shirt you can probably afford something harder than a piece of cloth to put on your head. So whilst they might be appropriate for the lighter infantry I'm not sure they're necessarily great for these models Although you can, I suppose, headcanon the fact they may have something along the lines of the, um, the secret, I think, as they were known from the English Civil War, which was a small metal cap that you wore under your hat. Here we've got the close combat weapons that come on the set. So two swords, a couple of axes and a hammer. Some people may not like to use the swords, they're not the classic dwarf weapon, certainly from a Games Workshop Warhammer Fantasy sort of perspective, where you'd expect to just to see a range of axes and hammers. They're all short reach weapons, um, but I think if you look at the sort of more classical views of dwarves and certainly the Tolkien esque 
style that Games Workshop Watch, Watch originated from. Swords do make an appearance, so I don't really have a, a massive concern about that myself. Moving on to the shields, you can see these are quite plain, quite different from the heavy infantry shields, which are all decorated um, with iron on the on the front. So this does mark out the difference in the status of the units as well as the different types of armour. Other weapon options are spears or bows. Bows are an interesting choice for dwarves because being relatively short, certainly compared to humans, you wouldn't expect them to be able to have the draw let reach that you'd require for a strong, powerful bow. Classically, dwarves are often associated with crossbows and following the development of gunpowder, obviously, handguns. Weapons that make a, perhaps a bit more sense when you can't pull a bow back as far. Again, looking at headcanon, perhaps you're thinking here that these are some kind of powerful composite bows, so they don't require as much draw reach because the power of the draw itself compensates for that. For these models, I won't be using the bows. I'll be reserving that for any light infantry that I get. These guys are going to be sort of my shield war clansmen with a variety of weapon systems. Um, that leads us on to spears now. Spears, again, aren't a weapon you often associate with Warhammer Fantasy Dwarves. But I think as a weapon system, it really does make sense. They provide something that the hand weapons really don't, which is reach. And it helps really mitigate the weakness of the, sort of the shortness of the draws, the short arms, the short reach that a normal hand weapon would give against a human arm equivalently. There's a lot of videos out there if you're interested in the actual use of weapons, looking at spears, and there's a reason why virtually every culture used them militarily, and they're really effective weapons. Swords, axes, spears, really, uh, sorry, swords, axes, maces, hammers, they're sidearms, really, which you'd rely on after the use of the spear. So I think I'm going to be mixing some of those into my units and just counting them as sort of hand weapon or armed units just to add a little bit of variety. That leads us on to the command options. So we've got a champion and a standard bearer. Could put a flag on that pole quite easily. I'm not sure if I'm going to, having reserved sort of the bannery bits for my elite units. Um, again, as with the heavy infantry pack, there is no musician. A musician is available for a different range. Um, sorry, different pack. So there's a pack of three models you can get, includes a musician, but I'm not sure whether that's necessarily a great value because it can leave you with a number of models that you don't particularly want to use just to get musicians for each of your regiments. So continuing there to find a way around that particular issue and finding other things to use to represent that a model is carrying a musical instrument. So this is what some of these models look like put together. Now I've used some parts from the heavy infantry set, some parts from the dwarf infantry set to show really the two sets are compatible. The champion that you see on your right has the head of a dwarf heavy infantry model and a couple of the guys at the back have great weapons which come from the same kit so they they do fit as they would with the heavy infantry. Apart from that the other people are made up from the dwarf infantry pack. You've got one with hand weapon he will have a shield i've not attached it at this point because i prefer to paint shields largely on the sprue before finishing them off and i think putting them on this model will make it a bit awkward to get us at quite a few bits for the paint job then we've got the standard bearer at the back the angle the banner pole was held at i quite like it it's a really nice jaunty angle um so i'll see what that looks like when it's painted up at the moment, the weather where I am has been quite horrendous. We've got lots of strong wind, lots of rain. It makes it very difficult to get out and do some spraying, and I don't really have an internal setup for that. So 
it's kind of watch this space for what these figures look like painted and we'll have a look at that together when I've got some done. For now, thank you very much for stopping by. If you'd like to see more videos around my thoughts on the models that I'm using, what I'm painting, uh, along with any news that comes up around the release of Warhammer the Old World, do consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'm returned to the old world. Have a great day.